Knitting for the First World War. Sometimes there's a little bit of a feeling that some of the, what they were called comforts, that women were knitting for the men in the trenches, the men at the front line, was sort of, it was simply something to give the women at home something to do to make them feel they were doing their bit for the war effort. In actual fact, and I'm sure we've all seen Blackadder Goes Forth, we know even just from that the kind of wet, cold, and miserable, hungry conditions that people were living and working in. Keeping warm is always a, a huge issue uh, for <coughs> for soldiers, and of course during the First World War, we all know that people suffered immensely with trench foot. Um, planning to do another video about knitting socks. This is specifically about gloves that women at home knitted as comforts for the men in the trenches during the First World War. And you might think, well, there's not really very much variation in a glove, but they managed to come up with some really quite amazing things for the, for the lads. So have a look at this. First World War Rifleman's Sniper Glove. So the thumb and the trigger finger are fingerless. Those three finger fingers are actually covered. Uh, that's my first attempt at making this, which obviously went horribly wrong. But with a little bit of perseverance, I did manage to produce something that I think looks quite authentic and did manage to produce um, a non-dominant hand glove to go with it, even though I don't actually have a pattern for this. The book that I've been using, Knitting for Tommy, Lucinda Gosling, published by the History Press, does have authentic patterns in it, so authentic that they, they actually have the adverts along the bottom for white heather knitting yarn, etc., and this, this was how the knitting patterns were funded, was by advertising by um, knitting wool manufacturers. It was funded by advertising. Some things never change. So th this looks a little bit complicated because it's one row knit, which patterns refer to as plain, one row um, <clears throat> knit one per one. It's not actually as scary as it looks. If you're not used to knitting in the round, it can look a little bit scary to start with. But actually, it does have its advantages, principally that there's no sewing. So the jumper I'm wearing, this is a Gamsey of Guernsey, as opposed to a jersey. This is a fisherman's jumper. This is knitted completely in the round. There is no sewing. So either you have um, four or five double pointed needles, uh, easy to get in charity shops, various sizes. Sometimes you can almost weep when you look at the kind of knitting that our grandmothers did, these very fine needles and obviously using a lot more four ply and three ply yarn than we do nowadays. I'm working here with double knit. Um, nowadays, if you're knitting in the round, people tend to use circular needles uh, for longer pieces. This avoids ha having six needles and it avoids th that ever present problem of double pointed needles of your work falling off the end if you have too many stitches on one needle and also it's not always very comfortable if, if the needles are too long to actually have um, have the point sort of um, <clears throat> as, as you're working with it but it's actually not too bad once once you get the hang of it so this is another sniper's rifle glove in in the making of course the slightly chewy bit is increasing for the thumb so the cuff on this nice tight knit one pearl one rib for the cuff looks a bit long think about it 
the, the glove that you're wearing needs to come well up the wrist um, so there should be no gap between your um, your sleeve and and your glove so to increase for the thumb it is simply um, make one on each side as as you're going round so mark this in some way if you like to use those little um, markers that you can buy nowadays that's fine I usually just put a piece of coloured thread in in the work obviously if you're knitting in the round it's not like getting to the end of a row so you don't know when you've actually completed that round unless you have a piece of coloured thread to, to mark that for you makes life a lot simpler worth a couple of minutes of your time following the patterns in Lucinda Gosling's book um, th these patterns were written over a hundred years ago and they don't use the same standard abbreviations that we use today it's a little bit like reading a knitting pattern written by Mrs Beaton and it was only when I found that some of those patterns had been published in a magazine called The Queen which was in fact edited by Philip Beaton at one time um, and was in the Beaton publish publishing house style that that actually made sense. So in some ways it's actually easier because instead of the standard abbreviation of S1, K1, P, S, S, O, slip one, knit one, pass, slip, stitch over, somebody talks to you. It's slip one stitch, knit one stitch, then pass the slip stitch over the... It's, it's really quite lovely. Print's a little bit small, that's, um, that's the only problem. Some of the other rifle gloves proved to be a little bit more challenging. Here's one which went horribly wrong. They do suggest using quite small needles. Obviously, these are all imperial sizes. We're working in inches, not centimetres. We're working in standard British imperial um, needle sizes. And they're often suggesting size 12, which is quite small. This one, I tried following the pattern, it went it went horribly wrong. There's supposed to be a hole in the palm so that you can feel the, the, the stock of your rifle against your palm. But that's, this was actually quite tricky to do. I do kind of wonder how many people actually went to the effort of knitting something that tricky how many people simply did nice simple mittens like these i'm sure these were much appreciated by the men nice simple mitten probably quite good if somebody goes fishing actually so you pull this piece up over your fingers this this fits me i'm, I'm a size, size five in shoes so this would probably be a bit small if you if you were knitting this for a, a sort of I don't know six foot tall person. So do think about the sizes of your needles. Don't necessarily just take the size of the needles that it says in the pattern. Do feel free to play with it and use larger needles or simply add on more stitches. This is quite an unusual mitten, obviously, because knitted on two needles and knitted what feels like the wrong way round so here's one that I'm that's a work in progress so this is knitted in two pieces and then sewn together um, so we're not in the round here I couldn't follow the pattern I just had to make it up from the photographs garter stitch you're knitting sideways when it comes to shaping for the thumb very easy it's knitting it's not rocket science simply cast off at one end and then make another stitch at the other end of of your of your thumb and just keep going really in, until it sort of looks about right um so if you have a man handy that you can use his thumb to measure against so much so much the better so this is the one that I'm actually working working at at the moment. 
colour, obviously khaki green, um, certainly I think towards the end of the war they were getting less and less fussy about the colours, they were running out of wool. The Anzacs, the Australians and New Zealanders of course had, had an advantage there because they had access to a lot more sheep, a lot more yarn. Um, apparently towards the end of the war people were getting so short of wool they were actually starting to spin dog hair. I have tried doing that. Um, depends on the breed of dog. Um, they can be a little bit smelly but you can get some perfectly functional working wool that way. The other glove that <coughs> we can make for our brothers, sons, whoever in the trenches is, is a gauntlet. So this I did in two colours. That's quite authentic because they would have been using up whatever, whatever wool they they had and really wouldn't have worried too much about the colours. But doing it like this it, it does illustrate quite nicely just how long that cuff is. And yeah, this is the length it said in the pattern. This is a large cuff. It's a gauntlet, not a glove. So the cuff goes over the top of your sleeve. You then reduce um, your, your stitches. So <coughs> there's um, the rib is oddly knit one, purl two for this piece of your rib. You can then adjust the, um, the length here. This is really simple. One piece and there's just a hole for your thumb. That's it. Perfectly functional um, fingerless gauntlet, probably much appreciated. Here we are, one in progress, just one long piece. Um, obviously you, you need a cast off edge for your thumb. Fold it in half and, and just sew up the side. Wrist warmers. These look a little bit like the sort of Jane Fonda workout leg warmers and in fact people did uh, enlarge the pattern and they did send the guys leg warmers which they could wear under their putties. The reason this has a dark green stripe at one end is so you know which, which way is up. As you're putting this over your, as you're putting this um, under your sleeve, so this goes sort of literally just over your wrists, you need to put it the same way on each time so that it, it doesn't stretch, it doesn't um, lose its shape. A little bit tricky to knit because there is a spiral pattern in this, so you're constantly moving one stitch over, so you do need to pay attention and they are a pair. So one spiral goes clockwise, one spiral goes anti-clockwise again, so that you'd have one always on your left arm, one always on your right arm, so that they <coughs> would maintain their shape, because of course it's very stretchy. Um, it is it is a bit time consuming, I mean, you, you, but this small items like this are portable you can take them with you knit on the train on the bus um quite easily so how many hours work i don't know what's a glove maybe about 10 hours work or so depending on how quick a knitter you are but you really can imagine um just how much they would have been appreciated and of course for reenactors they're great things to have with you because um, members of the public can, of course, try them on themselves. This is actually a sleeping hat. You can kind of imagine Tony Robinson's character, Baldrick, in Blackadder Goes Forth wearing this. Planning to do another video about hats and balaclavas. So, knitting in the round, vintage knitting. Um, you will need a needle gauge which you can find, they turn up a lot in charity shops, but you can still buy needle gauges to measure the size of your needle. But be prepared to play with it and don't be a slave to a pattern. 
sometimes you will need to, to use slightly larger needles. But there we are. Connect with your great-grandmother.